This episode was originally going to explore the question of what people would do for work in this time of increasing black unemployment. Kicker would be asking them, would they take a job playing a slave? You know where that sticky brown stuff comes from? Or you know what it is? It's nicotine. I wouldn't play a slave for the economy, you know, just to make money. I wouldn't play a slave because of the recession. It's interesting. I mean, I think it might be, it might be something. That would be amazing, but I think I'd have to be desperate. <laughs> I wanted to know how it felt to be a slave. Ever since I was a child, I've always fantasized about living in the 1800s. So Mondo Black took a trip to Colonial Williamsburg, Virginia, to look at the job that the word slave doesn't even dignify or measure up to. The job of a black historical interpreter. You see, Colonial Williamsburg is a fascinating place bringing America's early history alive. And the black folks who do the job of historical interpreter, they don't do it for the money. They do it for our ancestors, providing a voice to those who are voiceless. We've been doing this now for over 30 years. And uh, there has to be some balance because your main objective is to educate people. And there are so many myths that uh, we have to contend with. And, and again, most people think of 19th century slavery and not 18th century slavery. So we have to kind of uh, create the distinction for folks. But we do have a lot of research since the 1990s. There was an explosion in research, much more research in the 1990s than there was when the uh, miniseries Roots came out. The story that they're telling is not a happy story for the most part. The story of slavery is a lot of what we focus on. There were free blacks that we talk about as well, but a lot of what we talk about is the story of slavery, which is not something that uh, that is particularly um, happy to discuss, and it can be very challenging to try to convey the history of slavery to visitors who either are unfamiliar with the story or sometimes they know about slavery but they know about 19th century slavery. There's an overabundance of information about slavery, not just in Virginia, but in all 13 colonies. Uh, more information about slavery and the uh, diaspora in uh, the Caribbean, South America, uh, even the slave trade itself, there's now a database that traces at least 37,000 slave voyages. So the amount of information that we have now is much more than it has been in the past. So that allows us to look at the topic of slavery in different ways. Now, one of the challenges that you always face anytime you do a presentation about slavery, you're going to have critics. One side is going to say, you didn't go far enough. Another side is going to say, you went too far. You have to stand there like you know what you're talking about. You will not be moved. You will not be swayed. You will not be intimidated. If you don't come correct like that when you're telling this story, you're going to get run over. They're going to eat you up and spit you out. So you, you, you really have to come. And that's why we stand like we stand and we talk like we talk and we engage people. And we're not afraid to correct folks too when the information might not necessarily be, you know, uh, all the slaves correct. going on that plantation, but those slaves are people that you know, people that you love. But you don't have a choice in the matter. Woman, right there in that black shirt, take that whip, give it to her. Come down here, it's one of your friends, it's one of your loved ones. You strike that tree like you mean it. If you don't, you get the lash next. Strike it again. Everybody saw what he did. He didn't That's want why to do we that, do. He understood it that if no he didn't do what that overseer or that done. master said, ain't enough people do. He was going to get Face that same slavery. lash upon right. his yeah. back. Don't hide from it. Don't act like, oh, you know, uh, my people didn't do that. Right. People, people need to wake up. Yeah. And if they would accept the courage, the 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 undenying. I live. I, I I will not just you know dry up and blow away. I will make it some way to be here generations later and still be telling the story that we mattered. 
I mean, that, that, that's rich. Everybody else wants to get all into, uh, you know, their ancestor worship. You know, we do the same thing. You know, posterity for other people means something else. Posterity, being remembered. The Great Hopes Plantation is an actual working farm. The various historical interpreters play out the daily functions of 18th century living. The black historical interpreters, well, they tell a different story. Or even the, even, even, even the Christians that went over to get them to mess their head up, to get them to bring them over here to tell into the fields, to make Master Jefferson and others well to the The skilled interpreter here includes the ability to know about many aspects of, of 18th century history, whether it's the law of slavery, in this case that we're talking about African American history, uh, the social conditions, the, the constant threats that, that people were living under, um, sort of debilitating effects of slavery on both the owners and the enslaved person uh, of this system. But they are able to shift from one focus to another almost seamlessly if they if they see that an audience has a particular interest if they spot an individual in the crowd that appears to be reacting to something they can they can refocus their interpretation on the fly 52 percent of the population in this time frame in the 1770s was black um there's actually the potential of it might have been a little more than half um so with that being said you know the visual certainly um will 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 be a shock and awe and a, and a reflection of understanding what that looks like. But we need more of that. Um, <clears throat> and we need more of, um, how do I say, um, more programming um, that, that reflects um, less of a monolithic view. Look at these things. The slave comes here and they're bought on these ships. They're sold at an auction. But what do they bring with them? Their memories. They made these things. They came here empty handed. What didn't they come here with? They weren't empty handed. So they remember how to make these things. Look at this dude that has a face on it. Man, I still don't care if they put a face on there with big eyes or broad lips, but it's what they remember. It's retention of their culture. A lot of the people who do apply for the position are people who have had some exposure to history, sometimes specifically to African American history. Uh, we do have people who apply who don't know about African American history, and that's fine. If they're willing to learn, we bring them in and we, we train them in the history that, that we will be discussing. Um, some people who apply are, are looking to go into the museum field. Some are just looking for an opportunity to be able to use their knowledge of history and happily find the museum field. That's a great place to do that. There's no step and fetch it. Coons, Bucks, or Mammies here at Colonial Williamsburg. Just impassioned people dedicated to the memory of our collective family who helped create this place called America through their blood, sweat, and tears. As black unemployment continues to soar above 11%, there's a job here for those ready, willing, and able to share our story. What is your contingency plan for a slave revolt or uprising? <laughs> 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 I'm trying to figure out what slaves you're talking about. <laughs> you know, um, you know. I always have, I always have like the 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 the, the, the curveball that sort of mess around. You know, if a, if a, if, a, if a slave uprising, a, a slave revolt happens, then uh, I'm, I'm I'm hopeful that the cause is just and somewhere in the midst of them, I'm standing there, you know, pushing forward. Okay? <laughs> Trying to affect change. <laughs>